I want to dive straight in. I want to show you how easy it is to build a Blazor web application in five minutes. So to get started, we can open up Visual Studio, go File, New Project, and choose Blazor Application. Or we can go and use VS Code and uh, just use a .NET command line uh, interface to spin up a brand new Blazor WebAssembly application. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go over to my console and go .NET new Blazor WASM WebAssembly. Um, I just need to give this a name. So I'll give it Blazor uh, .NET user group. Yep, that should work. Um, so this is going to spin up a standard template or standard project. It's going to you see a restore a couple of little uh, nuggets for us. And in a moment that should be done. And yep, now I can open up uh, VS Code. So let's go to Blazor Net User Group and open that up. All right. Okay. Here we go. Here's our application. I'm just going to give uh, VS Code a moment to load itself. It's got to prepare a few things. Might show a couple of pop-ups for us. But let's look at what we have in our application. So like all good programs, we have a main method and basically only four lines to get a Blazor WebAssembly application up and running. We've got a, a WebAssembly host builder. We're adding some, uh, adding a root component called app, and we're sort of identifying it with this another app tag in, in, as a text value. And then here's something familiar, um, add scoped. So this is dependency injection. So we're adding some pre-configured services uh, into our uh, application builder. So this is a HTTP client that's pre-configured to point to our base address. And that's it. Then we'll have everything we need to start running our application. So this is just asking me if I can want all the debugging assets. I'll say, yes, please give me that stuff. All right, and while it's doing that, very familiar CS project. You can see that uh, this is .standard 2.1. There's a bunch of WebAssembly NuGet packages being brought in and a new HTTP JSON package. So this is the HTTP client that runs in a browser and underneath that it uses the, uh, the fetch API to make our uh, web requests for us. And finally, we see here that it's got the Razor language version, version three. So uh, Blazor uses Razor for its markup language. So they took the words browser and Razor, put them together, and we came up with Blazor. True story. Um, so we saw earlier that there's this app component, and here it is. Um, so this has got the main router for our application. So any component, or any route that we give to our application, this will resolve that and figure out where go and what to display. So if there is something that is found, you know, a, a, a route that resolves into an actual component, use this uh, main layout type to display our components. Now, if there's anything that's not found, so uh, you know, we typed in a weird route into our application, it will say, sorry, there's nothing at this address. Uh, nice and simple. Now, in, this, this, in this class, or in this component, sorry, we will be adding a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, we can add our authentication checks, whether they are logged in or not logged in, and we can redirect them to the right place. And um, there's the online offline mode, for instance, if we're dealing with uh, progressive web apps. Um, but yeah, so this is a very important file. So we added quite a lot of uh, overall or cross cutting concerns into our application right here. We also have this underscore imports file. And this is interesting because we can um, bring in, uh, by adding a using statement, um, a, an entire component library. So we, we can reuse those components in our Razor files without having to, again, add a using to our files. Now, this only applies to the Razor markup files, as we'll see shortly. <clears throat> you don't, uh, you still have to use your normal using statements when you're writing a, a plain C Sharp class. And again, so here, something very familiar, a www root. Uh, we have an index.html file. And we see here, it brings Bootstrap in by default, just all the Bootstrap CSS. Uh, we've got some custom application styling. And here's our app component that's being rendered inside of the HTML, uh, index HTML. And so this is, this is where um, once that component is loaded, it's gonna replace this with whatever 
is resolves out of that. You know, whatever route we give it, it's all going to render in here. It's going to replace this with our, our UI code. And very importantly, what makes all of this possible is the Blazor WebAssembly uh, JavaScript uh, runtime uh, framework. So, uh, you know, this, this lets us essentially load the .NET uh, WebAssembly runtime, and then we can run all our custom C-sharp code, all the DLLs that we give it, just standard uh, C-sharp or .NET uh, standard 2.1 DLLs, and they run in the browser. It's going to be very exciting. Um, so something else, let's see, we've got a, a, a nav menu, and there's a, a main layout. So we see here, it's a sidebar with our nav menu, and um, here's a special sort of at body render fragment. So uh, we can see that this is a layout file. So when, when the router resolves uh, an address for us, it's going to know which component or which page we want to render. And we're going to take all that content and render it in this uh, render fragment called body. Um, so now I've mentioned the nav menu. We'll be looking at this a little bit later as well. We're going to add a couple of links. But we can see here that there's a link to a page called counter with a href of counter. Same with fetch data. So we'll look at this. So here in pages, we've got a counter component, counter.razor. You can see here it's got a, an at page directive with slash counter, so that's a route to get to this component. And we can see that there's a, it's printing out a current value, there's a button with an on-click event that says increment count, and if F12 onto that, IntelliSense works, hey, um, we get to this method that increments the count by one every time we click on it. So this is normal C-sharp code. Um, it's just sort of tucked into this little at code directive uh, on this component, the razor component. And um, then yeah, fetch data, it's a bit more of a complicated thing, shows us a table, renders a data by looping through a list of uh, forecasts. And as we can see here, that when the component is initialized, it loads some data from uh, currently just a, uh, a JSON file. But we can actually call any sort of HTTP endpoint to obtain information. And uh, inside of our code is a sort of nested class called weather forecast. So that's a concrete type of what we want to use to display this information. All right, so we should have everything we need now. Though if we go and press F5, the application should just run. And um, here we go. So it's got the browser open. So when the first time you run this, it does take a moment for um, a whole few things to, to, to download. And uh, when it's done, Voila, here we have a Blazor single page application. Um, got the home page, got our counter page that we saw before. This is what it actually looks like. We go click on the button, we can see the numbers increasing, and we have the fetch data page. Cool. So, very simple application. It's got a couple of things in it. Um, and what else can we look at? So, um, we open up the dev tools. Oh, we can straight away see there's a little blazer highlight here that says it loaded six megabytes worth of resources, which is quite a bit. And if we if we dig into that, we can see here that it's downloading components, dot forms, or DLLs, the actual .NET DLLs, uh, Microsoft extensions and components and system dot drawing. There's quite a lot of stuff in here. Uh, well, but what is a bit different here is that this is .NET dot WASM or WebAssembly. Uh, we can see it's about 780 kilobytes uh, in size. So this is the .NET runtime that's been um, compiled into WebAssembly uh, as a minified uh, uh, code that is responsible for or able to take a normal .NET DLL and run it in the browser. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, certainly amazing. We're going to see how we can use a lot of our favorite packages, even packages that existed before Blazor, we can even run them in the browser right now. We also see there's this cool little uh, debugging hotkey, Shift-Alt plus D. All right, so let's try that out, Shift-Alt D. Uh, okay, so what have we got here? It says it can't find a debuggable browser tab, but it gives us a hint. So there's a command that we can run from the if you go Windows plus R, so you can run this command 
that will open up a new Chrome, or you can even use Edge, obviously, uh, that has remote debugging enabled. So if we just run that, cool, we get a second instance of Chrome. So don't close the one behind it. If you do, it stops everything. Um, and then again, we just try that hotkey. That opens up DevTools, but a slightly different version of DevTools. Because if we go and look at the Sources tab, something very special. Now we actually see all the C-sharp code for our application in the browser. That's interesting. Um, you know, here's our nav menu, it's all the markup, here's some C-sharp code. Uh, here's the code for our counter. That's pretty cool. And look at that, we can set a breakpoint. So when I, when I go to my application, I'm gonna go to the counter and I'm gonna click the button and look at that, it's uh, stopped on this line. And what we can see here, some interesting stuff. Uh, we've got the call stack and we've got all our locals here. If we expand that, you can see the current count is zero. So let's just make it go one line further and go continue. Now the current count is one. Awesome. Cool. And it's reflected here, it's one. So if you try that again, again, the breakpoint's hit. You see the current value is one. Move over one line, now it's two. So awesome, we can actually debug a .NET, or C -sharp .NET application running in the browser with all the C -sharp code available in the browser, that, in the DevTools. It's really cool, really, really cool. Um, it's definitely gonna solve a lot of my pain when I wanna build my applications. Now, let's just undo these and make that continue running. And uh, yeah, the same for all the other components. So it's all there, all, all very cool. We can dig a bit deeper into seeing, you know, what is really uh, there. You know, here's all the DLLs and the sizes and things that we saw from before. Um, you can see there's quite a lot that goes into running a Blazor Web Assembly application in the browser. But when we publish our application, you know, for uh, for release, uh, it's a lot smaller. So all the unnecessary uh, code is all stripped away and sort of just the bits of the framework that you need are then uh, bundled into your uh, application. Cool, so um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna close these for now. I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio Code and let's see what else we can do. All right. Um, so what use is a component if you can't reuse it? So you see we've got this counter one here and it's got a, a route called slash counter and from our nav menu, that's where it goes. Okay, so it goes to the counter route. But what we could do, just sort of, just to prove a point, we go into our main page here, we can delete that for a second, and we can then go and add a counter. We can see already it's uh, discovered our counter with IntelliSense, so, and the code completes working, cool. All right, so our counter is there. Now I'm just gonna build my application. I'm just gonna start this up in a slightly different way, because, um, you know, what this does, I'm gonna do .NET Watch build, and as soon as I make um, sort of code changes, it's gonna watch for any changes and it's gonna rebuild my application, and all I need to do then is just uh, refresh the page in the browser. It's not quite the same as the live hot reload that we have with React and Angular, uh, but it's sort of halfway there. The um, live hot reload for Blazor WebAssembly is coming in a future .NET version. So that's very exciting. Okay, that's built. And I'm gonna press F5, I'm just gonna launch the application again. And now here on our Hello World page, we have the very same component and it works in exactly the same way. Very cool, very cool. All right, very nice. So uh, I can close that. I wanna show one more thing. So we can actually, this uh, code that we have here, we can also debug it in Visual Studio in Visual Studio Code. So I'm just gonna set that breakpoint here. So the bright red means it's gonna work. And if we launch the application, and so we set it on the uh, the counter increment. So I'm gonna hit that button. Visual Studio Code should highlight for me. There we go. We can see here, I'm just gonna open up the debugging tools and I'm just gonna close all that, and make it a bit bigger. So now we can see we're broke on this line um, we've got the current count, and just like before, if we, uh, just put a breakpoint on the next line, 
we continue, we can see that should have gone up to one. Cool. So very much ex well, exactly the same debugging experience. We can actually debug the whole application uh, in VS Code or in the browser. Um, you don't have to keep jumping between the two. You can stay in one place if you really wanted to. And here we go. It hits it again. Cool. All right. Let's, let's let continue. Okay, so it's very easy to see that we can debug our application. It's easy to add components. And um, you know, we just looked at a hint of the routing and how to add uh, links to our pages. So I'm going to go back to the slide. So that's how we build a Blazor WebAssembly application in about five minutes. Uh, nice and easy. So you can do it with Visual Studio or with Visual Studio Code and the .NET command line.